Welcome everyone to the Apotheki Tales, the basics of pharmacology. Today we are going to talk about the heart failure, the normal physiology of the muscle contraction and the different types of the heart failure. So let's just get started. Heart failure is a progressive complex disorder in which the heart is unable to pump the sufficient blood to meet the needs of the body. And this is due to an impaired ability of the heart to adequately fill with and or eject the blood. And this is usually accompanied by the abnormal increase in the blood volume and the interstitial fluid. So what are the different underlying causes of the heart failure? It includes the arteriosclerotic heart disease, myocardial infarction, hypertensive heart disease, valvular heart disease, dilated cardiomyopathy and congenital heart disease. So once again, what is heart failure? It is the inability of the heart to pump the sufficient blood to meet the needs of the body. So before talking about the different types of the heart failure, let's just look into the physiology of the muscle contraction. So the myocardium, just like the smooth muscles or the skeletal muscles, will respond to the stimulation by the depolarization of the membrane. So what is depolarization? It, it means the contraction. So that means what happens is that the contractile proteins of the myocardium get shortened. Hence the contraction occurs. And this depolarization will further end with relaxation and will return to a resting phase which is the repolarization. So what is depolarization? That is the contraction and repolarization means relaxation phase or resting phase. And if you observe, these cardiac myocytes are actually interconnected to each other and hence acting as a unit. That means if a stimulus will come and act on a particular single cell, these cardiac myocytes together will act as a unit and together will contract. Now when you talk about the action potential, the cardiac myocytes are actually electrically excitable and have a spontaneous intrinsic rhythm that is being generated by certain specialized pacemaker cells located in the sinoatrial and atrioventricular AV nodes. The cardiac myocytes also have unusually long action potential which can be divided into five phases starting from phase 0 to phase 4. So now we are going to talk about the different phases of the action potential. They include phase 0 that is fast upstroke, phase 1 partial repolarization, phase 2 a plateau stage, then phase 3 repolarization and finally phase 4 forward current. So first we are going to talk about the phase 0 fast upstroke. So in this if you observe this is the outside of the cell and this is the inside and this is the membrane which consists of the potassium channel, sodium channel and the calcium channel. So now what happens during this fast upstroke? The sodium channels get opened that is these are the fast channels which will result in a fast inward current. And this upstroke will further end when the sodium channels get rapidly inactivated. So what happens during the fast upstroke? The sodium channels will open resulting in a fast inward current and this upstroke will end as the sodium channels get rapidly inactivated. Next we are talking about the phase 1 that is the partial repolarization. So always keep in mind during the repolarization the potassium channels get opened and there is an outward movement of the potassium. So in this partial repolarization the initial rapid phase of repolarization is mainly due to the inactivation of the sodium channel because we have already mentioned the upstroke usually ends with the rapid inactivation of the sodium channel. And this is further followed by the rapid opening up of the potassium channels followed by the closing causing a transient outward current. So is that clear? So what happens? The sodium channels get inactivated and there is a rapid opening and closing of the potassium channels hence causing a transient outward current. So that is about the phase 1. Next we are talking about the phase 2 that is plateau. Here the two channels that is the calcium as well as potassium channels will open. So first the voltage sensitive calcium channels will open resulting in a slow inward depolarizing current. So what is depolarizing? Contraction and that balances the slow outward polarizing leak of the potassium. So this is what is happening during the plateau. Next during the phase 3 repolarization, so I have already mentioned during the repolarization keep in mind there is always an outward current of the potassium. 
So in this repolarization phase, the calcium channels will close and the potassium channels will get opened resulting in an outward current that leads to the membrane repolarization. So what is the net result of the action to this point is a net gain of sodium and loss of potassium. This imbalance is further corrected by the sodium potassium ATPase. So why is there a sodium net gain? Because if you remember beginning of the action potential, there is a fast upstroke during which the sodium gains its entry and there is a build up of sodium within the cell. And here at this stage, when you reach at this stage of the action potential, there is the outward movement of the potassium. Therefore, there is a loss of potassium. So, this imbalance is corrected by the sodium potassium ATPase. Now, during the last phase, that is phase 4, there is a forward current. Increasing depolarization results from a gradual increase in sodium permeability. So how is this depolarization increasing? This is mainly when there is a gradual increase in the sodium permeability. The spontaneous depolarization automatically brings the cell to the threshold of the next action potential. So this is going in a sequential manner. So first what happens, there was a fast upstroke, then a partial repolarization, then it entered into a plateau then the repolarization a finally forward current and hence continuing so that is about the action potential next we're going to talk about the cardiac contraction so always remember the force of contraction of these cardiac myocytes or the muscles are actually directly related to the concentration of the free unbound cytosolic calcium that means how much ever calcium is present within the cell that is contributing to the force of contraction of the cardiac muscle. So therefore the agents that increase the intracellular calcium levels or those that increase the sensitivity of the contractile machinery to the calcium will increase the force of contraction. And this effect is known as the inotropic effect. These inotropic agents can increase the contractility of the heart either by directly or indirectly altering the mechanisms that control the concentration of the intracellular calcium. So let's just look into the calcium handling by the cardiac myocytes. So what happens is that when the stimulus comes, when the action potential occurs, the calcium, the voltage sensitive calcium channels will open and causes the entry of the calcium ions within the cell. So inside the cells, these calcium ions will trigger the release of the calcium from the stores, that is from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. As a result, the large quantity of the calcium now present within the cell will initiate the contractile process. The calcium is then removed by the reuptake into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and at the same time by the extrusion from the cell by the calcium sodium exchange. At the same time, the sodium balance is being restored by the sodium potassium ATPase. So this is how the calcium handling occurs within the cardiac myocytes. And now we're going to talk about the physiologic compensatory mechanism that is responsible for the progression of heart failure and at the same time that will occur in response to the heart failure. So first that is responsible for the progression of heart failure is that there will be a chronic activation of the sympathetic nervous system and as well as the RAS system which is associated with remodeling of the cardiac tissue, loss of the myocytes, hypertrophy and fibrosis. At the same time, this will cause the additional neurohormonal activation which will create a vicious cycle that if left untreated leads to the death. So this is the way in which the physiologic compensatory mechanism leads to the progression of the heart failure. Now let's look into the compensatory mechanism in response to the heart failure. So the failing heart evokes three major compensatory mechanisms to enhance the cardiac output. Although initially it would be beneficial, these alterations ultimately will result in further deterioration of the cardiac function. So first what's happening is there is an increased sympathetic activity. The baroreceptor senses a decrease in the blood pressure and activate the sympathetic nervous system. In an attempt to sustain this uh, tissue perfusion, this stimulation of beta adrenergic receptors will result in an increased heart rate and a greater force of contraction of the heart muscle. Along with this, vasoconstriction will enhance the venous return and increases the cardiac preload. 
an increase in preload that is the stretch on the heart increases the stroke volume which in turn increases the cardiac output so we have to remember that these compensatory responses will increase the work of the heart which in the long term will contribute to further decline in the cardiac function next mechanism is via the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so when there is a fall in the cardiac output as in case of heart failure it decreases the blood flow to the kidney prompting the release of the renin and resulting in the increased formation of angiotensin 2 and the release of the aldosterone this results in the increased peripheral resistance that is the afterload and retention of sodium and water the blood volume thereby increases and more blood is returned to the heart So if the heart is unable to pump this extra volume venous pressure will increase and peripheral and pulmonary edema will occur so just like mentioned previously these compensatory responses will increase the work of the heart contributing to further decline in the cardiac function so the last compensatory mechanism that will occur in response to heart failure is the myocardial hypertrophy so when heart failure occurs the heart will increase in size and the chambers will dilate and become more globular so initially the stretching of the heart muscle leads to stronger contraction of the heart However, the excessive elongation of the fibers results in the weaker contractions and the geometry will diminish the ability to eject the blood. And this type of failure is termed as a systolic failure or the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So this is as a result of the ventricle being unable to pump effectively. and the other type of the heart failure which is occurring less commonly is the diastolic dysfunction where the heart will undergo hypertrophy and this structural changes will impair the ability of the ventricles to relax and accept the blood the thickening of the ventricular wall and subsequent decrease in the ventricular volume decrease the ability of the heart muscle to relax and in this case the ventricle does not fill adequately and the inadequacy of the cardiac output is termed as diastolic heart failure or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction the diastolic dysfunction in its pure form is characterized by signs and symptoms of heart failure in the presence of a normal functioning left ventricle however both the systolic and diastolic dysfunction commonly coexist during a heart failure So these are the different compensatory mechanisms occurring in response to the heart failure. Next we're going to talk about the compensated and decompensated heart failure. So if the adaptive mechanisms will adequately restore the cardiac output then it is said to be compensated heart failure. But if these adaptive mechanisms fail to maintain the cardiac output then it is termed as a decompensated heart failure and the patient develops worsening of the heart failure signs and symptoms typically the signs and symptoms include dyspnea on exertion orthopnea paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea fatigue and peripheral edema so this is all about the different mechanisms different types of the heart failure so in this video let's just summarize what we have learned we have learned what is heart failure then the physiology of muscle contraction which includes the action potential and cardiac contraction then we learned about the compensatory physiological response in heart failure that is increased sympathetic activity activation of ras myocardial hypertrophy then we learned about the different types of the heart failure so i hope you have clearly understood regarding the basic introduction about the heart failure if there's any suggestions and comments please do mail in us Thank you.